In this video, we're going to go over the LBV-88. Now, this is an old school vest that was supposed to kind of work with, but uh, ultimately use the methods to kind of replace Alice gear as far as the magazine pouches are concerned. Now, a couple of issues uh, with the traditional Alice uh, magazines were, or magazine pouches was that it carried three in each uh, pouch, which was fine. However, when you're like in the prone or you're uh, you know, when you're limited to a belt with suspenders, you don't really have much room to carry it. So, what this does is actually breaks it up, and this is actually a pretty efficient, you know, system. It's basically just for magazine pouches and frag grenades, and it, fl uh, it frees up this area uh, on the belt, so you can carry, you know, magazine pouches for your pistol. You can, you know, get a holster for a pistol on here. You have canteens, and you have room for a butt pack. It is a load-bearing device. This is something that I actually had a good amount of experience in boot camp with, and it w was designed really to work with the old-style flak jackets from the 90s and stuff, where it was basically just for shrapnel. Uh, it also works pretty good with the interceptors, but these straps over here, actually, from my experience, they would they actually did a good job of strapping in uh, under the shoulder pads of the old flak jacket, so uh, that was actually kind of interesting. But anyways, let's go ahead and get a closer look at this, and I'll explain a little bit more. Okay, with the LBV-88, you can see here that all the magazines are up at uh, chest level, and up at the top you have the double uh, magazine pouches that carry two, and I found out that I can carry two Steyr Aug magazines in each, and one in each of the uh, single mag magazine pouches. So, what I've seen is that it is much easier to go in the prone with this setup than if you had the ammo in front uh, in those little pouches, and it's not going to you know, grind in your hips and stuff like that, it's a lot easier to go prone. Now you do have the frag grenade pouches, which I'm using for uh, basically a monocular, and also for the other one, I've just got some some trauma gear in there. So, over on here, it was designed to work with a duty belt, so I have two canteens, and also an Alice Clip uh, double magazine pouch. So. Anyways, you can see the setup here. You have a flexible, a flexible, uh, you know, small to the back, you know, piece right here that you know will stretch a little bit, but not too much. And you can adjust it. It usually comes with a very long cord. If you get this new, it'll be braided, and it has these little adjustments right here. And you just pull it up. Uh, you just pull it down and cinch it by pulling up wherever you want, but it's not really too secure, so you'll want to just go ahead and tie it off and then cut it and burn the ends a little bit, so seal it up from uh, fraying and stuff. Also, the adjustments right here, you have adjustment straps. It's basically a one-size-fits-all in this whole system, so these adjustment straps in the front and in the back are to adjust it to where this uh, back area right here is basically just behind your neck and maybe a little bit lower. So I adjusted mine and then I used electrical tape to tie it off nice and neat. And that way you don't have too many extra little straps or whatever. So you do have adjustments there. And these shoulder pads are pretty well padded. They're actually pretty soft and they're very nice. So also you have these little snaps here that are good for holding down antenna wires or whatever, maybe a camelback, you know, whatever. It works. And then through here you can uh, run like the antenna here to keep it nice and flush with your body. Very secure system actually. So well, you'll notice on these, on all the pouches, to include the grenade pouches, you have this little flap right here. This actually makes it pretty good and pretty uh, effective at grabbing it and just grabbing it really quick. And you know, that's what I've found anyways, and it's also... Um, got a redundant velcro to help and I've noticed that in my experience it's really good to have retention instead of just having it open with friction fit so with that said I really do appreciate that on this system and you notice that the belt is actually quite open and you can put pretty much whatever you want on here and you can lay it out however you want you have room for a butt pack and also you can you know strap things with these d-rings you know to this system and you know Again, this was to kind of 
it was kind of an introduction to new uh, new tech or new gear. Uh, it's all webbed and everything, so it flees pretty well. It's pretty low profile, but it was designed to kind of uh, not really phase out the Alice uh, the Alice gear necessarily, but it was really designed to uh, kind of enhance it and uh, basically make it easier to carry gear and. You know, because having stuff just on a duty belt can get pretty cumbersome. And it, this is a lot better. It shifts the weight forward a little better. It's easier to get down in the prone. It, you carry a slimmer profile rather than just being fat around the waist. It equalizes everything and keeps it nice and slim. So anyways, next thing I want to uh, cover is the camouflage effect in this and how it goes um, with other woodland patterns and even some other patterns in general if you're interested in that. So let me go ahead and put some uh, cami blouses underneath so you can kind of see how it blends in. So here you can see how the woodland pattern actually works very well with it. The uh, this is an old school uh, woodland blouse, and you know it's pretty good for warm weather and stuff like that. But you know it works very well with this pattern. It blends in pretty good. The colors are darn near a match. This is just a little bit darker, but it it blends in pretty well. So, anyways, let's go ahead and move on to the next pattern. The next pattern is the uh, DPM. I believe this is Dutch DPM, but it's pretty close to British DPM. You can see these colors are kind of pastel-y. They kind of are uh, a little brighter, but they still blend in pretty good with the woodland camouflage, and it does kind of help uh, break up the pattern a little bit better. They're pretty good patterns overall, but it really depends on the kind of environment that you're in. The browns are a little bit more flat. They're not really broken up like, like these are. They have a little bit of beige kind of breaking it up and lightening it up a little bit but you know you can see the pattern actually works pretty well with this last but not least I have tiger stripe products uh, tiger stripe which was actually one of the most common uh, patterns I believe in the Vietnam uh, war era so uh, this was a little bit before the EDRL and there were a lot of uh, there's a lot of militaries that still like this pattern however I've noticed that there's so much black on here that it almost looks black even at a distance but this with the woodland it actually seems to kind of blend it a little bit take away a little bit of the black in the in the kind of constant you know thick black patterns that you see on here they're pretty thick and they can catch the eye pretty well depending on the environment you're in but overall I think that this helps blend it and actually gives it a nice almost gives it a new pattern at a distance so anyways that's uh, that's with the tiger stripe pattern still works pretty well Okay, so now is the time in the video to kind of discuss magazine placement and reload. So the placement of these magazines is pretty efficient and it's kind of offset. You know, it's not exactly right in the middle, although you can crank this down and if you're smaller stature, it's going to bring them a little closer and if you can crank them down, however, it's going to make it a little bit hard to breathe when you're under pressure, let me tell you. So, you know, it's good to not really cinch down and tape off these straps necessarily because you might want a little bit of extra room. However, it will kind of place them out a bit and make it a little difficult to reach. So usually, at least for me, is I find that the weak side magazine pouches are better for a sustained of a sustained uh, reloads and that means you have some time and stuff like that is not too much of an emergency and if it is a little bit um, if if you have the time or whatever I would load from the double first and because it will be a little more loose you're not, probably not doing too much movement however if you're moving right away and then you need to uh, reload behind cover and you got some time then I would just go um, I would just go with the single because you don't want them, uh, you know, dropping out. So uh, you, you don't have too many magazines on you, and you can carry extra, you know, magazines on your belt if you have room and you wish to. However, you know, usually I like to save this side because number one, because of the bullpup and even the conventional rifle, the way you're able to, you know, put it in your workspace or something like that. The bullpup, you can just keep it in your shoulder so if it's a real speed reload uh, I like really quick or whatever then I would use the single uh, magazine pouch however 
um, I would try to start with the double because this one's a lot quicker and this would be the crossover from sustain which you're most likely going to see in the military is you're working with a team and you have a cover element to kind of help you however you know doing mount stuff uh, unless you can bound around and uh, get people to you know take your place you can move back in the stack and uh, let them take over then you know <clears throat> It, it, it really depends on the situation, obviously. The situation dictates. So anyways, let me go ahead and do a demonstration of these reloads, and I'll start with the sustained area. So basically, you know, you're out, you're locked back or whatever, so you eject the magazine, and I start with the double. It's a little bit harder to pull out, but, you know, it doesn't take that long, and now it's taking my time. So... I would retain the magazine, that's why it's sustained, you retain the magazine, you're not in a rush, you don't need to throw it out as fast as possible, um, and usually you sust uh, retain your magazines anyways, even with ARs, a lot of people, you know, like the quick release method, but, you know, my experience is, once you use them a lot in the Magpul ones, they, they're not going to have the kick that they usually do because the spring tension in the in the springs and such it kind of compromises it a little bit so anyways you know working with the sustained one if you're moving or whatever then basically what you're going to have is uh, you know you're going to go ahead and fire and then you'll go ahead and eject you'll be moving around or whatever and m mind you these straps are actually very easy to to get to so it doesn't take very very much to uh, get to them and pretty gross motor uh, skills on getting to this stuff so anyways we'll go ahead and do the quick reload portion which is going to be a little bit difficult if you don't have this placed properly but the angle where they're basically facing up anyways it's very ergonomic and very efficient for grabbing them and just being ready to go with these ones you kind of have to rock them around but with these ones it's pretty much a direct feed so that's another reason why I like uh, using this side for speed reload so anyways you know go in here and then dump that one the single is probably the quickest if you can work with it or whatever but you know if not you know the double is just as good boom and then dump it and get this one in and you're good to go and of course you know your next one is going to be pretty quick as well so there's a lot of options with this vest and you can work with it make it a little bit better it'll be easier to get the magazines out if it's not an uh, an AUG magazine however they are stretching out a little bit and it is becoming easier but I'm I'm finding that sometimes this side is actually a lot quicker to get the magazines out and the top side here so now this one is cinched down a pretty good amount so it doesn't have the flexibility as much especially when you already have magazines up here to get the magazines out and do your reload as you probably saw there so anyways uh, that's my video on the LBV-88. I still find it very efficient. It's very cost-effective, about 20 bucks. They're very easy to get. They last a long time, and they can take a good amount of abuse, just like good old military hardware used to be. So, anyways, go ahead and check that out. You can find them on eBay or whatever. Check out my blog at doitright.org and uh, look at that section where I discuss, you know, these AUG magazines working in these mag pouches and working pretty well. So, anyways... You guys have a good one. Give me a like and also subscribe if you haven't. Thanks a lot for watching.